Hey there guys, what's going on? It's Craig Parson for DS Sports as always and we are continuing again with the Nation's Greatest series where we are once again looking at another famous figure in world football from a very obscure country who has either led them, led their country to um, a sort of unique period of, um, of like a, a, gold, a golden era, so, so to speak of their of a nation's international football or just a prolific figure in the world of domestic or like a Ballon d'Or winner or, or whatever you want whatever you want to say or just someone who has stood out in a footballing sense from an obscure country. So we've looked at George Weah from Liberia, Liberian president and famous figure, former Ballon d'Or winner, so so on and so on. We've also looked at Finnish Pushkash, who's obviously one of the most prolific goal scorers in the history of world football. And now we are going to Bulgaria and we are going to be looking at Haristo Stoichkov. Um, a brilliant um, uh, forward player, a very unique forward player as well, part of a part of one of the best eras of um, a club's history. We'll go into that um, just shortly, but um, someone who has been a prolific figure in um, <coughs> in uh, Bulgarian football and also, um, you know, continued to be a famous face all over the world. Um, so we'll start off with Hrisko Stoichkov, forward player as well, We've looked, we, we have looked at a lot of forward players, we might look at more defensive figures in future episodes and I'll continue to research that as I go along. But um, yeah, a 13, 13 year Bulgarian international with um, and a 20 plus year uh, domestic career as well at 10 different clubs, uh, or say 9 different clubs, 2 spells at one at, uh, at one club in that time as well. Played over 450 domestic appearance, domestic games and has played 83 times for his national team as well over that 13 years. Um, born on the 8th of February, I think that's 1966, but 1996, that'll make him only a year younger than, a year older than me. Um, I, I think it'll be the 8th, 8th of February, um, 1966. <coughs> in Bulgaria, um, I think it might have been the capital, Sofia. I'm not sure. I, I think I might have just forgotten that wee detail there. I think I read that it was maybe in Sofia, but I might be very, very wrong on that one. So please forgive me if I am. Um, started his career at 16 years old, where he was at um, uh, Hebros, Hebros, which is, um, uh, I believe, it will be a Bulgarian team. Um, so, but, uh, just a Bulgarian team that would have picked him up. Played for two years, played 32 times and scored 14 goals. So obviously that's a good good rate for a teenager to be scoring goals. One every two games doesn't go amiss for most, in most, in most senses as well. So, um, yeah, brilliant rate of clip. Then moved to probably the biggest side in Bulgaria, Sofia, um, in 1984, 18 years old. Where he would go on and play six years, he would go on and play 19, ta uh, sorry, 119 times, and score 81 goals as well. And the last of those seasons was probably one of the best seasons we saw of that sort of period of time, where we saw, you know, a lot going on around Europe. But this one would have sticked out a lot more. He plays 38 games in the 89-90 season, and. Um, he played 38 games in that time and scored 47 goals, which is remarkable. As a result, he was named Euro European Golden Shoe. Um, that that tally also included 38 goals in 30 league games. So, a brilliant, brilliant clip, brilliant uh, set of statistics, and um, yeah, so it really improved his goal scoring tally. It, it was still good before that; he was constantly in double figures, but obviously this one was. The um, sort of crowning glory in that moment for his uh, 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 Sofia career, his Bulgarian career, domestically. Um, from there, he would then seal his move to Johan Cruyff Barcelona um, in 1990 in the off-season there, and would go on and play 151 times, scoring 76 goals um, between 1990 and 1995. And in that time, he would win four La Liga titles in a row, um, and the 1992 Champions League as well. The first year of the or it would be 
1992 was the year the Champions League started, so we've done last European Cup, um, which is incredible. Um, actually, that, no, that was under Van Gaal, wasn't it? I can't remember. It was uh, under Croy, under Croy for under Van Gaal. I think it was maybe under Van Gaal. Um, but yeah, a brilliant, um, a brilliant club career at Barcelona. Uh, like I say, a goal a game as well. Uh, sorry, a goal every other game for Barcelona and a really good Barcelona team as well, which I had the likes of Romario. Um, there's a few other players in there that have slipped my mind as well. Ah, uh, there's some really good players on that team. And I've forgotten them. That's terrible. Um, but yeah, it was. I remember it was a very um, famous Barcelona team in the early 90s and would obviously go and dominate Spain and get their crown and glory by winning the first um, European Cup stroke Champions League um, in that time as well. So, um, no, that was de no, that was definitely under Cruyff because I think Cruyff then left and Val Ga Van Gaal came in. I think just after he won the Champions League in 1995 with Ajax, I think. I could be very wrong on that. I might be very wrong on that. That really is quite terrible. But, um, yeah, because Johan Cruyff was all about... That was, no, that was definitely a Johan Cruyff team. Because Johan Cruyff was... He was... Because it was always a bit of a feud in the early 90s between Johan Cruyff and Van Gaal because they were obviously two figureheads of the, of the Dutch coaching game. And... Um, Johan Cruyff was very much uh, about indivi individual brilliance and playing a certain way, playing a certain type of football, which meant that players had freedom, but also had uh, an ability to go and score goals and all that kind of jazz as well. So, obviously, with the players that Johan Cruyff had, that was very much part. Of, that was very much the sort of the trend that would occur in Barcelona in the early nineties. Whereas Van Gaal was very much structural. Um, the, strict, the strictness and the structural aspect of play and obviously being fixed positions and, and we've seen that over time and time and time he's been successful on it but sometimes it's worked sometimes it hasn't um, in the modern game so yeah it's a very um, that was a very sort of famous uh, coaching battle uh, between two brilliant two brilliant minds of the modern game um, so like I say five years at Barcelona where he was very successful won four La Liga titles, like I say, was Ballon d'Or winner in 1994. 1994 obviously was a big year for um, Bulgarian football when they went to 1990, the 1994 World Cup and were um, finna and they placed fourth. It was a brilliant, brilliant World Cup in 1994 in the States um, with some sort of unfamiliar figures rising to the top there. Stoichkov was one we're looking at. Um, another one of those in a future episode, I think it'll probably be the next one once I've just done a wee, wee bit more research on it and um, yeah, he was joined top scorer in there as well, I think he was with 6 goals um, um, so yeah, a brilliant year for um, Haristo Stoichkov and uh, Haristo that year with the Bulgarian team as well, he's 5 time Bulgarian Football of the Year in during his career, I would imagine most, most of those were in the sort of early years well, I just I just realised he was actually at Barcelona again in the future. We'll go on to that later. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so a brilliant first spell. Now we've just now that I've just noticed that uh, brilliant first spell at Barcelona. He would then switch and move to Parma in Italy, and also Parma at this point were slowly coming through the ranks in Italy and becoming one of the um, were they one of the Seven Sisters? I think they were one of the Seven Sisters of Italian football in the mid to late 90s. So, um, yeah, so moved to Parma. He did only spend one year at Parma. Uh, he scored five goals in 23 games, so a less prolific spell and one that obviously didn't go down well and um, obviously wasn't as suited to Italian football as he was to Spanish football in Catalonia. Um, he would then go back to Barcelona, uh, have two more seasons, would play 24 times but they would then score seven goals, so obviously, again, not quite as prolific as Korea uh, between 1996 and 1998. And in 1998, he would play for another three clubs. So he would play one, he would play four times for Seska Sofia, scored one goal, would then go to Al Nasir, 
in the Middle East and would score one goal in two games. So a very cameo appear cameo show in there before he would then head off to Japan for Kashiwa Racel. Um, he would play one season there, score 12 goals in 27 games before he would then go to the States in 2000 to play in Illinois at the Chicago Fire. He played two seasons, like I say, 51 appearances and 17 goals. So back to a relatively decent clip over the, tw over the two, over the periods with, uh, in Japan and in uh, Illinois and Chicago. Um, played about 80 games, scoring about 30 goals, not too not too shabby, not too bad, but a player of his calibre could probably do with, sco with scoring more goals there. And then he would go on to DC United in 2003 in the off-season, uh, between 2002 and 2003, go to DC United where he would spend his final uh, year at the club uh, as a domestic player, um, scoring five times in 21 appearances. So all in all, 454 appearances, like I said earlier, 219 goals for the Bulgarian international, for the Bulgarian legend. Um, still living on to this day, of course. Um, has had a couple of spells, I think, with the Bulgarian national team as a manager. And um, yeah, there's been sort of all over the place, really. Um, no, nowhere really particular of note, I don't believe. Um, but yeah, still a figurehead of Bulgarian football, especially in the 1990s, um, where he was at his most prolific in the mid to in the mid to early part of that decade, um, and was obviously someone who was um, a figurehead of the initial period of dominance that Barcelona um, would um, produce, would be able to show to the world. In the nineteen nine in the nineteen nineties and in the and in the sort of history as well, since we formed in eighteen ninety nine, his international career, like I say, ended in nineteen ninety nine, started in nineteen eighty six when he was at Cesc Sofia. He would play eighty three times for the Bulgarian national team, but would score fifty seven sorry thirty seven goals in that time. So about what he was producing at club level, but. Um, it was more sort of more of these goals were coming in these major tournaments in the mid 90s as well. So um, yeah, it's a great obviously obviously a great career. I don't know why I'm being so hesitant about it. It's a brilliant career um, that Stoichkov was able to um, produce. It was maybe a bit more subdued either side of his spell of either side of his initial spells at Cesca Sofia and Barcelona. Um, but nonetheless, he was a terrier on the part. He was one of these ones who would kick back at referees, or he would, he would really be, um, you know, one of these like sort of giving it, giving it the big end on the on the pitch and all this kind of stuff. He was very, he was a very, um, you know, wound up figure on the pitch as well. So. Um, but yeah, a brilliant career that this man endured, uh, was that this man enjoyed, and another one to add to the collection of a nation's greatest in these younger, in these um, obscure countries as well. So on that note, I know I may have talked a bit more about Stoichkov and his career, but someone who was a prolific figure in Bulgarian football, um, someone who is widely regarded as one of the best players I've ever had and one of the figureheads of the 1990s as well. So, a brilliant career for Histor Storchkov. He goes down as a nation's greatest. On that note, guys, we'll be back for another episode very, very shortly once I shorten up a, fi a few fine-tuning issues with my research. Go and research a bit more about this. And we'll be back very soon with another player who is renowned, renowned as the nation's greatest. Until then guys, thank you very much for watching and until the next one, have a good one. Cheers.